By the summer of 1979, Fred Silverman was in trouble at NBC. While he had managed to greenlight some successful programs, oh, hello, Larry. You talk to people. and a few not-so-successful ones, his throwing the network's full weight behind the flop super train had badly damaged his reputation. Uh, but that's another story. After Super Train's failure, Silverman kept looking for a big-name marquee program that he could build a network schedule around and that would bring attention to NBC. He thought about doing a variety show, which had proved successful for him at CBS with Sonny and Cher and at ABC with Donnie and Marie. But he couldn't find the right hosts for one. Until one night, the perfect act popped up on another network. On a slow news night, Walter Cronkite had closed the CBS Evening News with a human interest story about Min Nemoto and Keiko Masuda, who together formed the Japanese pop act known as Pink Lady. The girls had been selling out stadiums in their home country and had even managed to break the American Top Ten with a song called Kiss in the Dark. Silverman thought that the two girls would be an interesting change from previous variety show hosts. He paired the duo with comedian Jeff Altman, who was under contract with NBC at the time, to help them adjust to American humor. He also knew just who to tap to produce the show. While Sid and Barney Croft are better known today for their psychedelic children's shows from the early 1970s, they had also been very successful as producers for variety shows, including creating Donnie and Marie for Silverman. Sid Croft knew exactly what the show would have to be. He wanted to make the show, and I quote, the strangest thing on television. He pictured the show as starting with a little Japanese box, which would open up to reveal the show. And the show would just get stranger and stranger as it went along. In essence, he pictured a show that would be a mix of Sonny and Cher, HR Puff and Stuff, and Laugh-In. Silverman's response when he heard Croft's idea, I'll let Sid tell you himself. Fred Silverman looked at me and he said, let's do Donnie Marie. No, this is too weird. The Crofts hired Mark Avanier, who they had worked with on a number of shows before, as the head writer. Avanier and his staff went about building a fast-paced variety show which would thrive on Altman's ability to ad-lib with guest stars and allow Pink Lady a chance to get in on the jokes. And the Crofts did get to work in at least one of Sid's ideas from his original concept. The show would end each week with a running gag with the girls trying to get Altman into a hot tub. The show that Avanier and crew created was fun, witty, and should have been a hit. There was just one problem. The ladies didn't speak English. Now you girls do speak English. Oh yes, we spend many, many hours in Japan learning. We wanted to speak perfect English when we got here. Oh, and you speak English too? Yes. <laughs> because of the language gap, scripts for the show had to be written well in advance so the girls could memorize them phonetically. There'd be no opportunity for rewrites as better jokes came to the writers or timely topics presented themselves. It also ruled out the ability to improvise, interview, and ad-lib with guests, which was a staple of the format used by other variety shows of the time. It made getting guest stars hard and working with the girls next to impossible. Their fame in Japan, which was supposed to be an advantage for the show, also proved to be the show's biggest headache. Because of their success, me and Kay had been booked on a huge sold-out tour throughout Japan and had to keep flying back and forth between LA for filming and Japan for concerts. They didn't have time for much rehearsal, and their commitments wreaked havoc with the show's shooting schedule. And finally, one big headache surrounded the show's title. They're hotter than the odd couple. 
sunnier than Sonny and Cher. It's me and Key. It's Kay. And Jeff. They're Japan's hottest superstars. Pink Lady in their American TV debut. He's hit comic Jeff Altman. Pink Lady, a new series coming soon on NBC. You bet. All of the network's executives, especially Fred Silverman, insisted that Jeff Altman's name had to be on the show. Pink Lady's managers, however, insisted that the show could only be called Pink Lady, and that adding anybody else's name would be a breach of contract. They even proposed a so-called compromise, where the show would be called Pink Lady starring me and Kay, featuring Jeff Altman. In the end, the show went out on air with the title Pink Lady, but was advertised and promoted as Pink Lady and Jeff. By the time the word got back to the girls' management, it was too late to do anything. Pink Lady and or Jeff debuted on Friday, March 1st, 1980 at 9 p.m. The ratings were bad and the reviews were worse. At a time when the variety format was starting to show its age and variety shows were falling out of favor, Pink Lady and occasionally Jeff came across as just more the same old tired shtick. The comedy bits with the girls fell flat, mostly because of their wooden delivery and their uncomfortableness at speaking English. I'd like to meet our two new training bunnies, me and Kay. Hello. Hi. Me and Kay are going to be training for our Tokyo club. Nice. Well, do you think you have what it takes to be a Playboy bunny? Yes. <laughs> oh, no. I don't know. These girls are so beautiful. What are we? Depth tempura? We are just nervous being in the new sea. And the musical numbers? <laughs> Well, they spoke for themselves. NBC had contracted for a six-episode run with an option for more, but as time went on, it became apparent both to the girls and the production team that the girls' touring schedule would make future episodes difficult to schedule and that the best thing to do might be to not pick up the option. In the end, though, the ratings had the final say and made any discussion moot. NBC canceled the show on April 4th after only five of the six episodes had been produced and aired. Pink Lady's failure made Silverman a laughingstock in the industry. Some stations even threatened to end their affiliation with the network. And NBC's own Saturday Night Live mocked Silverman mercilessly. And now to talk about himself, this weekend update, social sciences editor Al Franken. Al. Comedian Al Franken even did a monologue on Saturday night called A Limo for a Lamo. But now get this. You know who gets complete door to door limousine service from NBC? Fred Silverman. <laughs> now, here is a guy <laughs> who is a total, unequivocal failure. <laughs> Okay. Right. The guy's been here two years, and he hasn't done diddly squat. Okay, and he gets a limo. Now, here's a list. Silverman was so angered okay, that he set out to get revenge. Shows. Franken, who along this with partner Tom TV Davis now, was supposed to take over from Lorne Michaels as showrunner, instead from, found uh, himself S's. shown the door. You see those? In place of Franken, Silverman hired Gene Domanian to run the show. The result... Well, that's another story.